Welcome to the third lecture in our never-ending discussion on Chapter 2's coverage of an introduction to organic compounds. In this first lecture video that you'll see, I will teach you guys how to correctly draw Newman structures. And I will teach you to explain the three general types of intermolecular forces, how to sort molecules by their boiling points, and explain why. And in my next and final concluding lecture for this chapter, I will teach you how to draw chair structures and how to do ring flips with chair structures. We now vault into a subject that can be confusing at times, the Newman projections. To explain this, I have to begin by examining a simple organic molecule, ethane, shown here. Now I want you to imagine that I'm going to convert this bland, flaccid drawing into a three-dimensional extravaganza. Well, sort of, anyway. <laughs> I now want to wave my magic hand and voila! I convert this molecule to 3D, like this. Okay, I realize that these drawings to the right aren't truly three-dimensional. I mean, we're still staring at a two-dimensional PowerPoint slide. But at the very least, I think you can see how these drawings here to the right, called sawhorse representations, are attempts at conveying the shape of ethane in a semi-three-dimensional fashion. The sawhorse representations here are kind of boring because ethane, frankly, is kind of a boring-looking molecule. So let's spice it up a little bit. Instead of ethane, we're now going to look at this molecule, which is 1-chloropropane. As you can see, its sawhorse representation looks just like ethane's, except that the back hydrogen right here has been replaced with a CH3, and the front one has been replaced with a chlorine. So I want you to imagine that you are a floating eyeball. If you were staring right down this bond here, what would you see? Well, I hope that you can imagine that what you would see would be something like this, shown right here. Now, I have to explain a little bit. This dot right here represents the carbon that's located up front from our perception if we were staring at it as an eyeball here. The circle back in the back represents this carbon atom back here. And while I realize that that isn't exactly what you see because the two carbon atoms would in reality be the same size, you can sort of imagine this tr uh, being depicted here. You can see that three-dimensionally the chlorine is pointing directly up with each of these hydrogens pointing left and right as shown. And they're all attached to the carbon in front, which is represented by this dot. And if you can imagine the bond connecting these two carbon atoms piercing through this dot and into the circle, which represents the carbon atom in the back, you can see that the CH3 that's pointing directly down is right here. And this hydrogen that's pointing up here to the left and up is up here, and this one here pointing up and to the right is right here. Now the problem with this molecule is that all of its single bonds can rotate. More specifically, this carbon-carbon bond right here can rotate. So what would this molecule look like after it rotates? Well, if we kept the chlorine and the two hydrogens that are stuck to this front carbon stationary, and then we just rotated the back carbon so that this CH3 right here was pointing up, it should look like this. Now I'll let you look at that for a moment and make sure that makes sense. And what if at this point you were a floating eyeball and you were able to stare down this bond? What would you see? Well, I hope you can imagine that what you'd see is something like this shown right here. Now granted this isn't completely perfect. In reality this CH3 would be directly behind the chlorine and these hydrogens would be directly behind the hydrogens in the front. Now, As it turns out molecule single bonds are rotating around more or less constantly so that the interconversion between these two situations, the one on the left and the one on the right, which are called conformations, is happening almost continuously. The manner of drawing these molecules that we show here at the bottom of this slide is called Newman projections. Now you may wonder, why in the world do we care? The reason is because the projection on the left, which is called a staggered conformation, is more stable than the one on the right. The one on the right, called an eclipsed conformation, is more stable than the one on the left. I'm now going to teach you a little bit more about this by showing you some of my in-class footage on this subject to help explain in greater detail. For this video, I'm going to show you Newman projections of ethane, propane, and butane. Let's go ahead and start with ethane. Our flat formulaic drawing of ethane looks like this. Two CH3, or methyl groups, attached by a single bond between the carbons. Three-dimensionally, how might that molecule actually look if we could examine it close up? Well, it would look like this. 
all of the single bonds rotate freely. So in real life, this is spinning around and all of these single bonds are spinning around here as well with uh, roughly infinite speed. If, however, you were staring down the barrel of this, you would see ethane look like this. You could imagine it spinning and spinning and spinning. But as it spins, are there any of these conformations or shapes that might be more stable than others? For example, if I had this thing spinning so that it looked like this, so that all the hydrogens were lined up with each other, would that be as favorable as if they were like this, where they are staggered? Now you can probably imagine that having all of the hydrogens lined up with each other like this is not as favorable as having them staggered like that. Now let's take a look at propane, which once again looks like a CH3, single bonded to a CH2, and then single bonded to an additional CH3. So it's a little bit different or more exotic than our ethane. Here's what a model of propane would look like. Once again, single bonds are going to rotate freely. In this case, however, we have something a little bit more exotic on this back carbon than just three hydrogens. It's got this additional methyl group on it. Because this molecule is totally symmetrical, I can stare down the bond here at this carbon atom, and it would be essentially exactly the same as if I were staring down the bond of this one right here. So let's go ahead and just do that. As this back bond rotates freely, you can imagine that uh, having it be staggered like this, where the methyl in the back is uh, not lined up with the hydrogens in the front, would be uh, much more stable than having it be lined up. So in this case, you can see I've got my hydrogen in the front lined up with the methyl in the back. So I've got uh, this thing being staggered, and uh, I've got it being all lined up here. So when it's all lined up, it's called eclipsed. When it's all staggered like this, it's called staggered. Now let's take a look at butane, which is even more exotic. We have to add another methyl group. Here's a model of butane. I've used slightly uh, shorter bonds here between the carbon just because it's easier to manipulate. As before, you can imagine all these bonds rotating freely. If we stare down the barrel of this bond right here, this is a little bit more exotic than the examples of propane and ethane. There are two different ways of staggering these two methyl groups, the CH3 group in the front and the one in the back. If I have them like this, where one is pointing up and the other is pointing down, that is called staggered anti. If I rotate the sucker like that, that is still staggered because they're not all lined up and eclipsed on top of each other, but that is called staggered gauche. If I have this uh, right here where it's eclipsed, I can have that thing eclipsed, or I can have the two methyl groups eclipsed. And you can imagine that both of those eclipsed conformations would be bad. The worst one, of course, is going to be the one in which these two methyls are eclipsed staring at each other's face. If I've got this thing eclipsed next to a hydrogen, that's maybe a little bit better. The best two conformations are going to be staggered gauche, but staggered gauche is not going to be as good as staggered anti, because in the case of staggered anti, I have both methyl groups being as far away from each other as possible. Which brings us to some great problems. Which of the following represents the most stable Newman projection looking down the C2-C3 bond of pentane? And next, draw the Newman projection that represents the most stable conformation of 3,3-dimethylhexane viewed along the C3-C4 bond. This particular problem is addressed to one degree or another in section 2.10 of our text.